Yeah, people have been saying that. It's it's a weird thing, man, when people sort of ref, not refer to it as that, but because it is. I mean, we all sort of did a lot in those early 2000s. Everybody was on the Stage Warp Tour and all that, you know. But it's a weird thing to me because the in the world of music that I listened to, which is like growing up with the bands that influenced me and the shows I went to, was like the No Effects. Rancid, Green Day, Weston Jig, MXPX, like that, you know, and then we came like right after them. And like, when they go together and do a tour, it's not really like a labeled thing of like, oh, is this like, or no effects at least, you know, like they're just yeah. continually doing it. Rance is doing it, Green has been doing it. Um, I guess Less Than Jake, if like Less Than Jake and Real Big Fish tour together, it's like, a, hey, it's I actually saw them play and, together uh, yeah, they a year ago. Recently, right? They yeah. did a tour, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I think one thing is just to continue touring and you know hopefully people continue to come out because I still go to no effect shows and shows oh, you know what I mean like so um, <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> um, band broke up in 2006 okay. I went back out in 2008 with my brother who was actually in the band like in the early days like in 95 to 97 mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I went out with a couple different guys, him, Chris from Good Charlotte played drums, stuff like that, because the guys didn't want to do it. They were like, started jobs, this and that, yeah. you know. Then I sort of continued doing it here and there randomly. I started some side projects, and then I'd sort of go out and do these tours where it was like I was doing half side project songs and mess songs mixed mm -hmm. together, sort of a thing. Um, and then <clears throat> um, I did a full record, a nice little hair on it, by mine. Um, <laughs> So then uh, in 2010, I started writing a record again, and it was very similar to The Mess Song. So okay. me and the drummer who's on the road with me now, Little Rich, who we did um, Kisses for Kings together, side project, he started writing that record with me, and um, we it was a little harder. It was, it was the hardest record we ever did musically, and that came out in 2012 or something, I think. But it was under the band name Mess. Yep. Um, and then, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, a year ago or so, I, me and my cousin were talking, Matt, the original bassist of Mess. Then he sent me a message that his daughter was learning uh, some Mess songs on the bass, and she wanted him to text me to let me know, and that she demanded, like, we'll text him right now. So he had to text me. And I was like, that's cool. <clears throat> um, can't say what song she was playing, but I was like, that's a terrible song. I thought there was way better songs to learn. <laughs> um, but so we just started talking, and I had just watched the Warped Tour DVD, and with the original guys on the 2003 Warped Tour DVD, which I had never seen before. And I was like, fuck, it would be fun to get on stage and play together again. You know, it's been almost a decade. Like, it's, you know, everybody, whatever anybody had reservations as far as when the band broke up, I'm sure it had gone away because it was 10 years of life and okay. families and that type of shit. So I asked him what he thought about doing some shows. I was like, you know, MXPX, Mike goes out a lot, but then the guys get together and do random shows, mm -hmm. which I had participated in, and two of those shows were on here a couple years ago. And um, <clears throat> so brought up the idea of doing like selective shows, maybe original lineup, like like small tours, stuff like that. And he was into it, so he's like, "I'll hit up Jer, <clears throat> and you hit up Nick." Send out some text messages, small conversations, and everybody's quickly on board. So we've done uh, only three shows. We did Anaheim Muscle Blues uh, May 29th of last year. We did Riot Fest in September, and then we did a Chicago show in uh, January my last okay. month. Okay. So. But uh, so what we're doing is we do as many shows as we can with the original guys, and then when we're, I have to go out and do like full tours like this, um, I get guys that I played with, guys from other bands that I'm friends with, and uh, you know everybody supports it. It's a thing yeah. where it's like I can go out and keep playing for people that want to hear the songs, and when we do the original lineup things, it'll be even a little bit more special, you know. But um, it's been cool. It's been good so far. Like. Nobody seems to be mad that it's just me. Everybody's like mm -hmm. stoked that they could hear the fucking songs. And I already thought about the next band t-shirt that I want to make for Mess. Just going to say Mess. Dude, I saw you 12 years ago. <laughs> that's literally the fucking quote of this. So I'm not exaggerating. It's like that. I hear that so much. and Which is cool. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Like, that's the best thing. It's like, fuck, I, you saw me 12 years ago and you somehow are still coming to the shows. You know, like that's awesome. But I was like, that'll be it's good. If we have time, I would like to do it, but my, what's going on with what I'm doing right now is if you can sort of see that right there. Okay. Um, I started writing songs again, like same songs as what would be for the, a messed record, essentially. 
And the more and more I talked to the guys, I tried to put tours together and stuff. It was one of those things where uh, we could maybe do like nine shows in a row, and I'm like, okay, so if I fucking put my heart and soul into another mess record, somehow can get the guys to track songs on their days off, stuff like that. I know how much work's gonna go into it. Then we put it out, and I play nine shows a year. Not many people are gonna know about the record. Yeah. Not, it's not gonna be as successful as it possibly could be. I can't make a living off of playing nine shows a year. So that's why the compromise came of, hey, we'll do, when, when the lineup says Mast original lineup, that's the only time the original guys are there. Okay. When it says Mast, it's Mast from 2010 on. Yeah. Um, so essentially I took the songs and I started hitting up other friends and was like, hey, what do you think about starting a new band? And told them my situation with Mast and how, you know, I'm gonna be writing these pop punk songs or punk rock songs, whatever. And, but I want a different avenue to put it out and I want to be able to tour and continuously grow from it. Um, so on this tour, London Falling actually opens up. We play five songs to okay. show people what showcase sort of the new songs, because this is obviously the fans that would possibly become fans first, mm -hmm. so it makes sense to do it on this tour. And it's been awesome so far. Surprisingly, the last song of the set is <clears throat> an acoustic slow, slower song um, that I wrote about my son called Don't Worry Son, and people fucking love it. Like, out of all the, like, there's four full, like, rock songs, punk rock songs. Okay. I played the last one. I was like, dude, that song's amazing. Nice. You know, like, which is cool. Like, that's awesome. It, to me, it showed that, like, they're ready to accept, like, mm -hmm. the next step of mess or me writing songs. So. I sort of feel like there. this happens with every genre of music. Okay. If you look at 80s music, like the shit that was playing around here in the early 80s, um, then when Nirvana broke and Green Day broke, it was like, if you said you liked that music, you were fucking hated on. Like, you oh, yeah. couldn't admit that you liked that music. You give it another decade, people grow up, and they're like, ah, you really still do like that music. And then all of a sudden, it's okay to go to those shows again. And then Motley Crue's playing sold out fucking stadiums again. You know, like, not that we'll ever fucking do that, but, um, you know, like, I think everybody needs to take a break in life. And, and you go from your adolescent years to young adult to college, to finding a job, to getting married, having kids, and then once you surpass those years, and it's like, okay, like, I do want to go out and have a good time fucking a couple nights a week, you know, get a fucking babysitter or whatever, like, yeah. um, and then the thing is that there's, there's a new breed and a new school of pop punk that's coming out, and, you know, sort of, you know, pop punk sort of became the dirty word for a little bit, mm -hmm. and it was like, you had to, like, emo music or the fucking heavy shit, and it was like, <clears throat> now all of a sudden there's these new pop punk bands coming around, during their their own take of it too like one of them's on the stores band handguns they're yep. really good um so it's making these younger kids like okay well if this is cool now well, who influenced these guys yeah and then they're discovering us you know the same way i think that it happened with the other way too with the, the genre or the generation before us um yeah like your generation i found you guys like all those bands then from that i found mxpx right. no effects rancid right um so i think that they're you know like it's, it's good. The more bands that get back together and play shows, mm -hmm. the better. Because it's just bringing it back more. And, you know, it's the world that I've lived in since I was fucking 15. So. Um, you know, how I see it is that uh, I wish that that existed back in the day when okay. we were all over the place. Because... You know, I got like maybe like eight, a little over 8,000 followers on Instagram, which is rad because those are like diehard fans that I could reach out yeah. to. And um, and if I'm doing anything new, like the new band, stuff like that, like they're instantly no. And then I'm like, hey. And the good thing about my fans is that if I'm like, hey, can you repost this, retag it, yeah. post this picture? People do that a lot. And that's a word of mouth. And that's the best way to get people to know about new stuff. Um, with these younger bands you know you see some of these kids and they got like 500,000 followers and shit and I'm like and I look at their pages and I'm like in no way are they utilizing this page the way that they can yeah to you know to make money to sell different things uh, you know like <clears throat> I wish that existed so it's not as if um, you still need to get a following to make social media relevant for you like you can't just you know I mean I guess there's like YouTube stars and shit but um I just, I'm curious to see what happens when the next social media thing comes along or if these kids end up using it properly to keep their career going. Because, yeah. I mean, I started playing shows, I put on my first record in 97, it's almost 20 years later and I'm still on the road. I don't know how many of those bands will actually still keep doing that. You yeah. know, like, 
and through social media, I think there's a way to keep it going on your own, you know? So, I mean, I think it's a great, great, it's free marketing, you know? Um, this tour is actually sort of turning into a world tour. So after we do the States, we head over to Japan. Nice. Uh, from Japan, we go to Australia and New Zealand, then from New Zealand to Southeast Asia, which I've never gone to. So to play a bunch of markets over there is going to be fun to see. You know, I've seen most of the world, some places I haven't, so that's exciting. And then um, come back for like another two weeks off, and then I think we're doing all of Europe. Nice. So that first part of the, the Japan, Southeast Asia, uh, Australia thing is just going to be the two-headed monster with us in uh, Hawthorne Heights. Then I think in Europe it becomes a three-headed monster again. Okay. So. A lot of, I mean, fuck, it's the most touring I've done in years, <laughs> consistently, and I got a little boy at home, so it's a little harder to do it these days. Uh, my Instagram is Anthony Lovato, A N T H O N Y L O V A T O. Um, we have a Twitter page for Mess, I think it's Mess Official. London Falling Music is our Instagram uh, for London Falling. The master page, you know, we have all the social media sites, so just awesome. fucking follow them. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, and I'll be talking to you soon. Cool. Thanks, bud.